I just read Ascendant by Michael R. Miller. This is the first book in the Songs of Chaos series, and I really enjoyed it. It's one of my top five, top ten books of the year so far out of the, I think, 60 books I've read. So it's up there with Drew Hayes and Ryan Cahill as some of my favorites for this year. Now, I've seen this book described as YA, and it is very easy to read. It's a very straightforward plot, but it doesn't have what I consider the trappings of YA. The plot is not driven by any type of teenage angst, and there's no miscommunication trope in this book. So there is nothing I disliked about the easy reading style. It was nice to have something that simple to read and just to be able to fly through a story like this. This would honestly be a great book for a family car ride because the audiobook was well done and there's no foul language in it. And like I said, it's an easy read. So kids would be able to follow along with this story as well. So speaking of the story, what's this book even about? This is the classic Dragon Rider trope, except it's not done in the classic way at all. Typically, when you see dragon riders, it's some farm boy who unwillingly or unknowingly bonds with a dragon egg that was stolen from under the nose of the evil empire. That's not what you're going to get in Ascendant. In this world, the dragon riders are still there. They're still present. There's nothing inherently evil about them, but they are a bit and by a bit I mean extremely elitist. The dragons want no vulnerability in their ranks. So before eggs are hatched they're able to inspect the egg somehow and see if the dragon that's inside the egg is going to be deformed or crippled in any way and if so they destroy the egg before the dragon can even be born. The story starts off with a cook's son who's destined to become a cook himself. In fact, his last name is Cook. The series is very much about order, thus the name Songs of Chaos, and families stay doing the same thing generation after generation. Everyone has their spot, everyone has their role, you do not deviate from that. Well, he naturally has dreams of becoming a dragon rider, and he's talking to a dragon rider at one point who has lost his dragon. That's kind of typical of these types of stories. And the dragon rider, or a former dragon rider, is trying to convince him it's not all fun and games. It's not all glory. It's not this remarkable life that you think it is. And he mentions that one of the things he has to do is he has to destroy the eggs of all of the crippled dragons. That way, there's no weakness in the dragons at all. So while talking to the boy, he basically tells him, you want to be a dragon rider? Go destroy this egg, this helpless egg. It is now your job to kill the dragon inside of it. That's the life of a dragon rider. Go ahead. Do you really want to do it? So naturally, he doesn't want to do it. In fact, he does the opposite. He saves the egg. So he can't change the world. He's not trying to take down the evil empire. He's not trying to change how everything is done. It's just this one night, he has this one opportunity to save this one egg, and he takes it. But now you got this boy who's supposed to be a cook, not supposed to be a dragon rider. That's not part of the plan. And you have this dragon who's not supposed to be alive at all. Again, not part of the plan. But the dragon is alive, and the boy bonds with it. So now you have this servant that's becoming a dragon rider, and he did it by stealing an egg that he technically shouldn't have had. That starts to throw some chaos into this world of order. And that tone really sets the stage for the rest of the story. It's not an act of rebellion that kicks off everything. It's an act of kindness. It's a boy with a good heart not wanting to see a helpless dragon suffer. He just wants to do the right thing. And at the end of the day, he helps keep a blind dragon alive. Naturally, the story is going to evolve to where they are trying to save the world. But that's not how it starts. So that really set it apart to me compared to all the other Dragon Rider stories I've read. It's just a different tone, different feel right from the beginning. On top of that, the writing was a bit 
different in this where it was almost like a progression fantasy where the dragon and the dragon rider get stronger in big leaps. It's not a slow, gradual growth that they survived something and because of that, they have this new skill, they have this new ability, they are this much stronger. The other progression fantasies I've read, I haven't enjoyed. This one, like I said, I really liked it. So it's done really well. The one thing I was a little disappointed in or the one thing I would change or would have liked to see is if we're sticking with the progression fantasy theme, let's say a healthy dragon starts at level five. This blind dragon started at level four. I would have liked him to have started more at level one or two, have a bit more of a gap between him and where dragons are supposed to start. And then once the training really gets going, it's mentioned a lot that he is blind and he does have challenges he has to overcome. And occasionally he even comes up short with what he's trying to do because he's blind. But nothing that couldn't be undone or nothing that was that consequential. I wish it was a little bit harder and a little bit more cost for him to be able to get to the point where at the end of the story, it's almost like he's not blind at all. There's very little inconvenience to him during any of the battles or anything like that. He's learned how to live with his blindness. And while reading it, it's easy to forget that he is blind. Everything just seems to be as easy for him as for the other dragons. So that's my one big complaint. But overall, I really like the story. And when I ranked this out of 100, I gave it a score of 88. So it's up there with not just the best of this year, but some of the best books I've read overall. So I highly recommend checking it out. Let me know in the comments if you've read this and what you've thought of it. And if you haven't read it, let me know in the comments what's your favorite Dragon Rider story that you've read so far. And until next time. Bye.